Hi, I'm here today to talk about what if. And I hope we can all work together to explore a world one question at a time. The first what if question I'd like to bring up though, is we've already heard a lot, right? What if we had magic carpet, carpets? What if we uh, all drank a million cups of coffee? I don't know how that would turn out. But I'd like to ask a different what if. What if these are the greatest talks Missouri has ever heard? Um, I'd like to give a huge thanks to the organizers, to the presenters, but I'd also like to thank all of you for coming out here today because ideas worth spreading only spread if there's a community to spread them. So thank you for that. I'd like to go on to a different question though, and it's actually it's not a what if question. How many of you believe in this guy? Silent, of course not, right? We're too old, of course. We know, who would want to believe in Santa Claus? But what if you were to live as if Santa Claus were real? What if you lived in a way that there was somebody keeping track if you were naughty or nice, even when you weren't paying attention? What if the number one thing you were known for was giving gifts to people and expecting nothing in return? How would that change your life? How would that change your community? How would that change the world if we all did that? Let me ask you another question. How many of you do believe, but of course, I don't need to ask, right? You don't believe in this guy. But how many of you believe in the sock monster? Yeah? That crazy creature that steals the stinkiest garments we own somewhere between our socks and the hamper, the washer and the dryer in our drawers, and you wake up and it's time to go to work and where are my socks? Of course, it's this guy, right? Even as adults, we choose to believe in this. And a little embarrassing story, it wasn't so long that I believed in the sock monster. I don't know how many times I woke my wife up in the middle of the morning screaming and swearing and shouting out because I couldn't find two socks that matched. And it got so bad, I would even be late to work because of the sock monster. But then one day, it occurred to me, what if my socks didn't have to match? What if I could just reach in the drawer and put on whatever two things came out of it? What if I started showing up to work on time? And <laughs> this single question changed my life. It exposed the power and the potential of what if, because it didn't just stop at socks. I started wondering, well, are there, what if there are other things in my life that are holding me back or causing frustrations or becoming overly complicated because of something that really doesn't matter or something that doesn't really exist? So I started to ask, what if? And one of the first questions I had about what if was, well, how does this go with the way we normally solve problems? And I thought, well, what if my wife had just told me in the traditional way that we go about solving problems and said, why don't you just wear two different socks? And this is the way I would imagine that conversation would have gone. Well, that's crazy. And that quickly turns into, no, wait, you're crazy. And then, well, you're crazy. It's a crazy idea. Why don't you just mind your own business? And then it transfers to something else that maybe she's not doing. Why don't you rinse out your coffee mug in the, mug in the sink? Why don't you take out the trash? Why don't you put down the toilet? No, that one's mine, sorry. But <laughs> you can see how we quickly spiral out of control going from what the problem is to internalizing or personalizing, it becomes about you and then me. And we can have an entire conversation, if that's what you want to call it, but we're getting farther and farther away, not just from the problem, but any chance at a solution. Versus asking, what if? What if my socks didn't have to match? Well, now I'm using my creativity. Now I'm using my imagination. Now I'm saying, well, people would probably laugh at me. And then I imagine what would it look like people laughing at me at work. And I realize, wait a second, I sit at a desk and wear long pants, so who's going to notice? And then, what if nobody laughed at me? What if I could just pull two socks out? What if there were no sock monster? And this became so energizing. I started to wonder, well, could what if extend beyond socks? What if businesses engage their employees through what if? Address customers asking what if? What if governments, instead of saying, here's an issue, vote yes or no, actually listen to stories, saw pictures created by their citizens of what they would like their society to look like. But as an educator, I quickly turned to education. What if this could transform the way we educate? It made me think of this. Anybody know what this is? No. It's one of the most important documents in all of Western civilization, the Magna Carta. Do you know how I know that? I had a teacher that told me one time, this document is so important, there's gonna be a test on Friday. <laughs> so, what the smart students in class did 
As they studied and they studied and they studied, they showed up to class on Friday, they regurgitated all the information they had on the Magna Carta, they passed the test, and they never thought of this again. The rest of us, we studied and studied and studied, took the test on Friday, failed the test, and this has been haunting us ever since. <laughs> and I thought, what if, what if a teacher were to go in and say, we'll get to it, but first of all, what if you were king for a day? What if you're a queen for a week? What if that same teacher pulled the student up and said, you are the king of the classroom? How long do you think it would be, and how many royal decrees would it take before the rest of the class drafted their own Magna Carta? Or school administrators came to that same teacher and said, you will not teach the French Revolution next week. So we wonder about what else does this do? What does this do for you individually? Well, we think of what if as a serendipity collider. Serendipity is such a great thing. It's only made up of two ingredients, a whole lot of awesome and the unexpected. And what if, when you start approaching your world through what if, you get a whole lot of unexpected. The solutions come not when you're expecting them. They're coming from different places, different people. They're, they're the solutions that you didn't even expect. And that sounds scary maybe, but it's exciting, it's invigorating, it keeps pushing us forward. But the other great thing what if does is it allows us to seek solutions and paths beyond you. We've already seen about the why don't you approach. But it's also a humble reminder that we're all very small fish in an increasingly larger pond. And how silly is it to think that the solutions to the problems we're seeking reside within us or our limited perspective? What if pushes us to, to seek a community with whom we can collaborate in finding answers and finding solutions? But it also frees you from the expectations you're seeking. If you're old enough not to believe in Santa Claus, you're also old enough to know that one of the cornerstones of true happiness is obliterating our expectations. What if takes expectations and puts it aside? Perhaps my, 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 the thing I love the best about asking what if is that it provides us with dynamic answers. It doesn't give us with a single answer and like, all right, that's solved, now I'm done. It keeps pushing us forward. Even when we find a solution, that solution keeps us asking and keeps us moving forward, keeps us progressing on a never-ending journey. And when you think about human progress, this is what I want you to think about what the world would look like without what if. Every bit of human progress, from, from social justice to invention and innovation to even entertainment, is grown from a seed of what if. What if we were all equal? What if we all were treated equally? What if we didn't have to solely rely on the sun for, for, for light? What if we could walk on the moon? What if we could carry an entire library in our pockets? What if nobody asked any of these questions? It's not a world I think we should live in. But what can you do? Let's not, let's not go into that world. We want to invite all of you to join this growing global what if community. And there's only two things we ask. One, is be willing to ask what if. And two, be willing to listen to other people's what if questions and do everything you can to help transform those questions into action. And the process, together, we will shake up the world. And I guarantee, individually, your life will shake up as well. You will transform from, a, from an existence of I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need, to an exist, existence of I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, oh, oh, oh. And in the process, you'll get rid of this guy. Thanks a lot.